Hey everybody, so today we are going to be talking about data governance and how you can put that into practice in your own organization. A big part of that is automating it and putting guardrails up so that your taxonomists, your ontologists, your data folks have those in the back of their mind, yes, and you can customize a lot of this too for your own organization, but some things you wanna make sure you don't introduce breaking changes or logic that is going to mess up your auto indexing, your machine learning applications, whatever you're using for your taxonomy and your knowledge graph. So if this sounds interesting to you, we're gonna be walking through the pool party tool today. It is not a paid promotional video, by the way. It's just a tool I know does this out of the box pretty well. And that's why I asked pool party to come on today and walk us through that. If you don't use pool party and you are not in the market for a new tool, that's totally fine. You'll still find value out of this video because the way that they set this up will give you some tips and tricks that you can put into practice on your own if you have a different tool or if you wanna just build this into your regular processes that you have because you can build this out on your own if you would like that too. All right, so with that, let's go get started. So I'm Heather Hedden and I've been a taxonomist for over 25 years in various roles, uh, different companies and as a consultant. And so I've got a lot of experience in taxonomies and I built on that and written a book, The Accidental Taxonomist, which first came out in 2010, and I just revised it last year for its third edition uh, in um, late 2022. Uh, that even adds a new chapter on ontologies. So I've uh, kind of branched on beyond taxonomies mm -hmm. into ontologies a little bit, not as much expert as you are. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's, that's nice coming from you. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, definitely, definitely not. And then ontologies. Uh, I'm currently employed by the Semantic Web Company, which is vendor of pool party software mm -hmm. for taxonomy and ontology and knowledge graph uh, management. So I've uh, learned a lot more uh, by joining with them um, on semantic technologies, of course. And, well, and, and they're and lucky to have you. Here is a project in pool party. Mm -hmm. And under tools, there's quality report. Mm -hmm. And this is available for everybody. Advanced, um, if you're your basic pool party user, you don't, you know, you have to be kind of admin and then you can mm -hmm. go into that. So uh, the quality report, it generates a quality report when I click on it. Okay, let's see quality report here. There's quality. Thing. So the, it, it's not too many different um, criteria here. Mm -hmm maybe need some explanations. Now there, it, there are zero problems. So nothing shows up here. They're all, mm -hmm. it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> the hierarchical cycles mean you have a concept. It has a broader concept and then it's broader concept yep. is narrow through the other. No, yep. no, that, that Circular reasoning. Wrong. Yeah. And uh, non-disjoint labels, meaning yeah, that the same name for different labels or inconsistent preferred label. I don't have to go through all these, but I mean, it's it, having, uh, preferred label and in, in, in um, the same one and within mm -hmm. the same concept or mm -hmm. no broaders and no top concept with like that an orphan orphan yeah yeah, yeah. Um, language tag. same label for different concepts I referred to that before uh, mm -hmm. relation clashes meaning two concepts are related both hierarchically broader narrower and related mm -hmm. and valueous associative relations. <laughs> It's just, it's, it just doesn't have any value. Okay. <laughs> Two <laughs> concepts that have the same broader and then they're also related to each other. Well, that mm -hmm. doesn't have much value to it. I yeah. mean, that's actually that that's not, that's just kind of a quality thing. Yeah. So, um, but it's where you go into advance and then you have the quality settings and then you can control them. So oh, nice. uh, actually, this restrictive, so there's um, default. And you can see each of these, there, there's ignore. Yeah, I agree. You just ignore values. Right? And the ones that will report when I run the report, which I just did. Mm -hmm. And then enforce means um, if I'm trying to create it, it won't even let me. See, the That's other nice one, that I, you I, have I, that I, distinction. Yeah. yeah. So this is default. And there are some other scenarios um, like automatic indexing. Well, uh, you really don't want the same label for different contents, you know, automatic mm -hmm. index, that wouldn't be very good. Or some mm -hmm. other ones here, uh, I can say checks disabled means everything's ignored. That's a bit extreme. <laughs> and then, but this is the important one, custom. Yeah. Uh, well, so before you, you, and before you go on to, yeah before, yeah, before you go on to custom, I just mm -hmm. want to, you know, reiterate to, to the audience, like some of the other ones, 
that you have in, in this list, they are, again, more of that recommended practice where if you're doing document suggestion, yeah, yeah, you yeah. have kind of those things mapped out that would be more of a template if you're not, if, if those that are trying to use full party are not as familiar with this, they don't have all of their rules set quite yet. This is one way to kind of um, spring what you're trying to do. Yeah. So, yeah. So what I want to say is don't just accept the defaults. Think mm-hmm. about, you know, part of governance is don't just, you know, you have to, or your organization has to decide what you want to do, what yep. makes sense for your taxonomy and your users. Mm -hmm. So you can go in and then each of these is a drop down. Do I want values? You know, I can say ignore on this one and I want to enforce on this one and, um, you know, other things report, let's say, yeah, I can make other ones report or whatever um, for uh, whatever I decide to do. So uh, enforce is when they cannot do it at all. And report just means it, it runs in the report. Is yeah, there, I do that. Is, so is that where you would then, if you needed like a review? Um, so let's see, I just say I regenerate the report now. Mm-hmm. Cause I think I made some things stricter. Wait, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think if I have, well, let's see if I go to remember if I have any issues in here already you could just make an issue <laughs> yeah 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 okay one thing i was thinking of doing uh oh yeah yeah let's say seafood here and we have fish let's say i want to make it fish related to to shellfish that would be um that would be considered valueless because they're both narrower mm-hmm. than seafood so I go back to my um, quality settings and I had it. Okay. Now if I do report and then that. Okay. So I have um, enforced hierarchical cycles. So if I wanted to say uh, guacamole has narrower appetizers, which is... yeah, a loop has been detected. Right? Mm-hmm. It won't let me. It won't let me create it at all. Mm-hmm. I like but that if, though. It's a. It's it's a. Quality. It even tells you which one it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that that's how enforce works. But if I wanted to have report, well, we have seafood. Char- this is the same one. But if I made some mistake, and um, you know, I want to create a new one. Okay, I'm gonna create a narrower seafood chowder. But I'm not going to accept, I'm just going to create a new mm-hmm. concept. See, now it says, well, this is internal error, but yes, it's an error. It's not letting me mm-hmm. uh, because I, I, I had it before. So let's go back and look at the um, quality settings. Well, and Heather, this is still a static list. Like what if... Um... Are people allowed to customize? I mean, this is the custom scenarios, but there's still drop downs. Is there a way to add in your own logic for your own business? Okay, not in this, but there are a lot another there are other ways to check quality, okay. not just in those settings. Um, and uh, one of the ways, and this gets a little more advanced, is to uh, use Sparkle. Um, that's the query language Mm -hmm. for RDF. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then you can check anything. Let's say this one, I want to check all the time occurrences of hidden labels, for Mm -hmm. example. And if I run this, that's why I had hidden label there. So I, yeah, so I have it. I have it only in appetizers in in Mm -hmm. one place. Then I can go and and look here. Um, yeah, I do have hidden labels. I, I used it for misspellings, mm-hmm. but you can check anything you want, like related and whatever. Mm-hmm. And and that's that's great. I mean, you, you don't have to be an expert on Sparkle. I am not at all. I mean, <laughs> it's like very simple queries. Just show me all this. Yeah, that. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I like that there's there there are 
different options here, right? Like there is the strict enforcement where no, you can't do that. And the sparkle stuff that you're talking about won't allow that. I mean, sparkle queries mm-hmm. are just queries. It just brings back and retrieves what you're looking for. Um, so, you, you know, if you had certain very strict guidelines that don't fall in line with some of the um, custom uh, labels, or I should say fields that you have, you know, pre-built into pool party, then you'd have to probably find a different workaround. But, you know, especially with taxonomy, you know, there are a lot of best practices that are just, you know, smart, don't don't have circular reasoning, something that is a child of a child of a child cannot be the parent of all of them. (laughs) Like that just logically does not make sense. Um, So when it comes to taxonomies, I do feel like you know, whether people realize it or not, they are probably adhering to a lot of the standards anyway. So there's probably less of a likelihood to have these these super custom enforcements. But then you have the other side of things where, you know, if you're just trying to do quality checks and you are running health reports on the health of, you know, your taxonomy or your control vocabulary in any sense, you can run that and then you can pass it off to your taxonomist or, or your data engineer mm-hmm. or whoever to go in and fix any errors that they're finding. Yeah. Um, so we're here, you know, on the main menu, we have quality management. And so this this is the uh, and this is just grab quality test. settings. But at the, at the whole now I'm at the top level here. Quality management actually had there are two different parts of quality management, mm-hmm. the quality report mm-hmm. um, and then the data validator. And I know some people might think, what's the difference? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, tax time is data. But see, the quality report is based off of your quality settings that you can set yourself. Mm-hmm. All right. You know, that, that's where you decide, do do I want to allow this? Do I not want to? You can't just play around with data. I mean, yeah. it has to be it has to validate. So this is not customizable and it's a whole different set. And you can run this at any time. So if I'd run the data validator, you'll see a, a, a whole different set of criteria, which is much longer. Mm-hmm. And it also brings in um, aspects of RDF and, mm-hmm. and ontologies, you know, and we're, you know, because we're talking about domain and range. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's something else you might want to run yeah. periodically and it's run generally, well, you can turn it off, but it was recommended to run by default when you upload data or a spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. And so actually I did want to demonstrate that. So here I have, you know, my list of ingredients and I want to add, um, what for vegetables. So um, you can import a tabular subtree and I did have something on my uh, here are my vegetables spreadsheet. Uh, I think you picked food. That's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Enable <laughs> updates is that's so you don't have duplicates. But anyway, mm-hmm. so I run this, and it now it's running the data validator by default, and it's mm-hmm. checking all this stuff. So we can see here it it is it is running it, and it's fine. Um, but before we do actually, we I want to show yeah the the sheet where it was coming from is this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, if I if I, I move something, let's say I, I move this alt label once, you know, you may have some error, right? In your mm-hmm. spreadsheet. Okay, so um, so this one is my vegetables one. Okay, so I'm going to do this again. And as you're doing that, I'll just explain a little bit too. Um, For the data validator that Heather is going through here, um, a big part of this is if you have to export or if there's downstream systems that are expecting your data to be in a certain format like RDF or or something of that nature, this will help you find any errors so that you don't have any um, downstream issues. Or if you're using it as linked data also. Yeah. Actually, here it says I can't even process the column because I messed it up. But somebody had said, and this happens, you know, you got spreadsheets yeah. and like something because it was something that was done manually. It had something wrong and it's missing cell or whatever. Yep. It was, it would, you know, uh, yeah. might be nice, nice to give you a little, a little more information about which, which column. But yeah, so that's how it works. But anyway, if I go back to my original one, I'm, I just, I'll, I'll import it now. Um, import tabular get back my first one that works. <laughs> uh, actually, if I didn't check in part, I mean, updates. Okay, so that's all good. Mm-hmm. And then I, I'll get my uh, additional uh, list here with ingredients in it, <clears throat> or the additional ingredients of vegetables. 
Now I didn't check updates. <laughs> you notice that. Yeah. So what happens? So I have uh, now I have my vegetables, uh, and and hierarchy, you know, and and everything. And I think I had some alternative labels. Remember. Um, Yeah, now we got marrow as mm-hmm. <laughs> alternative label for squash where it belongs. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if I do my um, tools, my uh, quality report again, um, now see mm-hmm. something appeared because I, I got the same label for different concepts. Mm-hmm. Why did that happen? I didn't check enable updates, which means it's like, oh, well, if you already had a concept with this name somewhere else in the taxonomy, it will. Mm-hmm. Just put it in both play. It'll make polyhierarchy. But now I actually have created a duplicate of the potatoes mm-hmm. uh, because potatoes was here under vegetables. And if you can see, it's really small. It has mm-hmm. UID 237. But I also had potatoes under my pasta, rice and potatoes dishes. And this is a different number, 54. So mm-hmm. I do have mm-hmm. two concepts of the same name. Mm-hmm. And I had, um, had well, that in my settings was something to uh, uh, report on. And the, the vocabulary you're working with here is relatively small. So, you know, for the audience, like you probably would catch that. But let's all be honest, our taxonomy is yeah, much you bigger. Know, I mean, I... <laughs> Yeah, so I I would have to decide. Oh, do I want it in the same place or potato? Yeah. You know, you know, because if we have a a faceted taxonomy, this could be implemented as a mm-hmm. faceted taxonomy. Then it's okay. I mean, I meant potato dish versus potato ingredient, yeah. and I'm, I'm okay. But if you're doing auto tagging, I, yeah. I, I I don't know. I mean, you'll have to decide whether. That's well, and also, like if you're using taxonomies as a data source into a knowledge graph, perhaps. Um, having duplicate concepts like this, um, if they are conceptually different, then they need to just be expressed that way, right? And this mm-hmm. will help you kind of identify some of those things so that if you are using this taxonomy, you know, you're you're talking about auto tagging. I mean, that's one type of machine learning that you could use um, a taxonomy for. I mean, you can use taxonomies to train a lot of different machine learning algorithms having things like this um, as a health report to pass on to your machine learning colleagues, just so they understand where they might need to update their models, or maybe ask you to update your model, i.e. your taxonomy or your knowledge, Mm -hmm. whatever you're building out, um, is also a really nice way to have that back and forth communication with with the folks that are doing that. Yeah. Okay. I I do want to point out a few other things Mm -hmm. in health check. Uh, Again, at the top level, we have metadata and statistics. So statistics, that's another way you can also check on your, your overall, of your, your tax on me. Mm-hmm. And this is very small, you see. Um, but see, I had enabled another language and you can sometimes see that, oh, I didn't put anything in or it needs mm-hmm. more concepts, especially since I didn't put it in my view. Mm-hmm. You didn't see German, it's DE mm-hmm. for German mm-hmm. because I don't do German or something. But then someone who's looking at the overall thing, oh yeah, we need to do more on that. Yeah. I also, I like to look at alternative labels to preferred labels. So we have 22 alternative labels and 130 preferred labels or concepts. That's a little light on alternative yeah. labels. You kind of want to get closer to- Kind of a to, gap analysis almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then here, um, broader, narrower, and that's nice, and related. Two, which is the same one. Very going small. <laughs> yeah, you basically either you decided, all right, we're having no associative relations, mm-hmm. no related, or let's let's enrich it and be a little more consistent. Now, it, mm-hmm. it might depend on a concept scheme. I mean, obviously, you don't do it between, you know, named entities or yeah. that type of thing. But if it's something that's more topical. Yeah, but it's like someone decided to put it in and <laughs> there was no policy about doing it anymore. So yeah. that, that's, that's an example. Um. Okay, so I mean, there is there is a reporting feature, but yeah, it's, it's not really uh, rich on that. We though we have a reports too, um, and there 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 are a couple of canned reports, but it's, it's the same. You would you can do more with with Sparkle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so uh, and there's other areas of government governance which isn't really quality uh, checks, but that's in- enabling a workflow. So I think I won't mm-hmm. get into that, but mm-hmm. you can, you can enable a workflow. Oh yeah. So you could probably run yeah. reports on where it fails, what parts fail, you know, well, no, but it's like, who, who, you know, it's kind of, somebody needs to approve what other people have done. Um, oh, and, I see. 
And another form of governance has to do with uh, notes on concepts too. Mm -hmm. And then you can look at the notes. Uh, it's like, yeah, if you go into something, it, it's under notes where you can actually create these other kinds of, um, you know, change note, editorial mm -hmm. note, mm -hmm. note. But that, that's another side of governance. It's not, yeah. not really the health check. I just yeah. like when, when we're talking about governance. Um, now, when we do talk, I've been talking about taxonomies and, you know, we we create taxonomies with an, a custom scheme based on an ontology to enrich it. And um, which uh, you may be wondering this dish here on, on that. So over here is the ontology part. And I had created this uh, cooking ontology that's uh, based on, you know, it's based off of it. Um, so I've, you know, created relations mm -hmm. now, you know, that the the dish, you know, occasion features the dish and the, the dish is served on an mm -hmm. occasion and the dish has, is used as an ingredient and the ingredient is in the dish. So I created this little ontology based with a custom scheme. Um, and ontologies are different than taxonomies because a taxonomy, you can do whatever you want. I mean, you can have duplicate constant, you know, that, they, you know, you don't want to have circular relationships so that there's anything that controls it. Ontologies do have governance built into that, like the owl language builds. Well, to be, to be fair, yeah, like ontologies and RDF and, yeah. you know, the things that have standards, there's, right. uh, ontology like schemas on the property graph side, but they don't all have strict guidelines. Yeah. So, but when we're talking about uh, uh, governance and, you know, it's, it's even built into this in, mm -hmm. interface, you choose your type and then you have to have the op opposite. Mm -hmm. But the important mm -hmm. thing is this restriction. Mm -hmm. How do you want it? When you create a new relationship, uh, you know, what are you creating it between, you know, you, you're choosing it between one and the other or, or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to go through it all, but, um, but yeah, that kind of built in, uh, governance. <laughs> it's nice that you have that though, especially for folks that might just be learning ontology, mm -hmm. that it kind yeah. of helps them have some guardrails. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say, you know, I wanted to do another one and I, let's say, you know, oh, okay, we're going to sell cookware to, to do this. I'll have to create a whole new, of course, concept scheme. But if I, I created something called cookware, you know, it's, it's, it's telling me, do you want it just, you know, completely separate from others or, or so forth. And then when I want to create a relationship now, I, I have this new one here mm -hmm. so I can, um, again, let me make it inverse, but then I can say, uh, that the, the dish is uses cookware, you know, so, um, Oh, okay, so it's the uh, now it's the dish, dish comes up here and now mm -hmm. where comes here and I can, you know, add it and then it goes in the other direction. Mm -hmm. The book where uh, <laughs> I don't know. Or okay. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I have another, another relationship here and I, I can apply it. But yeah, there's there's more restriction kind of yeah. built into that. Uh, yeah, there, there's a lot to talk about governance and that yeah. even goes beyond what you can do in the software, you know, yeah. sending up, um, you know, guidelines and policies. And, oh, and for so sure. Forth. I mean, that's half the battle is, is doing all of that mm -hmm. piece, right? Yeah. This is just the facilitation and implementation of it um, once you're you're through that part. But Heather, I want to thank you so much for, for joining today. And I do know that Pool Party has, I think, a conference coming up, right? When, when, when is yeah, yeah. In fact, I, I can promote that with my virtual. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look how <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's this uh, free online uh, two-day conference. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, not full day. It's a conference, like half a day, trying to balance time zones between uh, the U.S. and Europe. Mm -hmm. on March 7th. They had one before in fall of 2021, but it was much smaller. And you now we're hosting mm -hmm. it on a um, you know virtual conference platform. I'm giving one of the talks. So it's a lot. Actually, most of the talks are given by customers and partners, which is mm -hmm. great because you mm -hmm. really hear about use cases. 
Yeah. You know, it's not just us saying this is how the product works. And, All right. I, and so with that, I hope that you've enjoyed the video. I hope this gives you some inspiration to go and find your data governance path on your own. And if you need some help, obviously you can go and join the Pool Party Summit to see what others are doing in this space as well. Plus, there's a ton of other conferences that are going on right now in the knowledge graph and ontology and taxonomy space. So if you are interested in those, please leave a comment below and I will list some more out if you want to go and attend some of those. All right. So with that, I want to thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.